Hey everyone, Cody Mentz here. I have another What's New video for you. Unfortunately, no no Levi here. He ditched me. He went to bed. Um, no, I don't know what's going on for this weekend for the NA server, if they're doing a special or not, because they haven't announced it. Um, I'm sure um, you'll be able to find that at some point, you know, today, Friday. Um, maybe, you know, they're going to be announcing those on What's Next, which um, is kind of replacing What Weekly. I took a hiatus. Um, new host, awesome video last week. I would highly recommend checking that out. Um, but yeah, no, no news on what they're doing this weekend for a special. Um, so let's get into kind of what's going on. There's not a ton of stuff, which let me get my screen over here. I was getting stuck. Uh, so 1.9.1 finally hit. Uh, it's being updated as we speak on the EU servers, uh, Asian server, you know, RU server delayed a little bit uh, due to a couple is little issues. But basically you have uh, vehicle customization, so progressive uh, like decals that you can kind of level up for playing your tank and doing well. Um, also Berlin was added into the standard map and also encounter battle map uh, queue. Um, map's pretty good. You know, we're going to go over a, a strategy for Berlin here that I have up and Wargaming also has a video as well. All of these links are in the video description below in the order that you see them as well. Battle Pass Season 2 starts, um, you know, M48, TVP, uh, 50 are the kind of featured tanks, and, you know, kind of like a little, you know, a little patch, nothing major, you know, at it otherwise. Um, hopefully in the next, you know, week or so, I don't think they'll announce it tomorrow, but, um, you know, maybe they'll start kind of teasing what's going to be in between, you know, basically Frontline end it, and now, you know, Still Hunter, we got a little bit of time for that. I think they're going to have some pretty cool stuff. Maybe a good marathon, um, possibly another PvE event, which would be pretty nice. Um, you know, ranked battles might make a appearance here soon. Uh, they did one in the summer last year. Uh, they usually do like a, a summer uh, clan board campaign as well. And, you know, who knows? Um, I think we're, we're going to definitely get some cool stuff, like a Watt Classic mode and stuff too. Uh, there was an issue logging into the NA server. Basically, they kind of released a little blurb on what it was. Basically, there's an error involving consumables uh, that were, you know, basically changed, taken out of the client. However, it didn't exactly go well on some people's accounts and it didn't let you log it in or log in because your account was different from what the server thought you should have. So, unfortunately, um, yeah, some people had some difficulties logging in, some more, submit a ticket if you still have that issue. Talking about Watts Week, or <laughs> I guess I about to say Watt Weekly, kind of, I don't know why they changed the name, I thought Watt Weekly was pretty cool, but Watts Next, uh, first episode was up, um, already, and I'm sure episode two is gonna drop at some point, you know, on Friday here, maybe they'll go a little earlier, um, I think it releases around, like, noon time, Eastern time. Uh, but going over, you know, basically stuff happening in the game, kind of sales, you know, stuff happening on the weekend as well. Now, like I said, I don't know what's happening on the weekend since, uh, you know, they're, I don't think they're going to announce things ahead of Friday anymore. Anyway, though, um, Russian server has uh, basically the FE405, a 3D style uh, for sale in their premium shop. Who knows when it's going to be for sale on other servers. I don't think it's been for sale anywhere else. But yeah, uh, basically it's discounted and, you know, they have it for sale for two weeks. Maybe we'll see it on NA, you know, EU, Asia, you know, otherwise. There's a new 2D uh, flame style uh, put into this patch, uh, kind of rumored to be a reward for the Summer Clan War campaign. Looks pretty neat. Um, it looks like something that would be a, like a clan war campaign uh, reward. So we got that to look forward to. Also, uh, Twitch Prime Care Package, which I probably could make this a little bit bigger too. Um, Twitch Prime Care Package, basically Chrysler K, T54 Mod 1. There's some special like decals and in inscriptions. They're like wings. They kind of look like a little cheesy in my opinion. But, um, you know, nice little goodies. Uh, they're going to be coming out basically today, June 12th. Moving on, so these are in the Battle Pass. Uh, this is the Kilmore Calvary um, style. I think it looks pretty nice. There's also Giant. I forget how that um, translated. I don't know if that's actually the translation. Whoa, didn't want to click on that. 
Uh oh, there we go. Anyway, back to that. I think they look pretty nice, the 2D styles. Um, also in 1.9.1, Concept 1B has a gold price to it. It's kind of finished balance. Looks like a pretty interesting tank. Uh, might be the rank battle reward uh, tank alongside of possibly the AMX 50T, which is also in the client from my understanding, but they're still kind of testing the 50T and balancing it. But the Concept 1B is kind of done. Uh, also, the Valiant is in the client now, again, for testing. It's not exactly assigned a value. The A46, though, is basically finished. Uh, they assigned a gold value to it. They changed some of its stats around. Uh, this could possibly be something if they do like a mini marathon. Um, or, you know, maybe they'll do something with the anniversary shop. Or even like another PvE event with this being kind of a tank that you could get. It's a mid-tier tank. Why not? They also have a prototype uh, Black Prince. And on top of that, they have a French M4A1 Sherman with a oscillating autoloader uh, turret on it too. Wargaming has a pretty cool uh, how to play Berlin map video. It's pretty long. Uh, the first bit is the most important bit. It shows you the different areas and tactics to use while playing it. However, I also have my own um, map strategy here. Not a ton of text yet. I plan on you know, elaborating on this once you get more time to see how people play it. However, you can hop over to my website to see this. Um, generally speaking, with Berlin, um, a lot of people are going to want to fight in this area. Um, and Wargaming kind of points out the same thing. It's kind of the easiest spot to get to uh, with where you spawn. You know, like heavy tanks, stuff with armor, big guns. The bridge is really, it's really risky because it's really hard to get across it because you have to weave in and out. You can't just shoot right across it and you can get locked down. Um, now I kind of left this blank because to be completely honest, you don't want to go down here in the beginning. It really comes down to like, you can drive down this way. You could drive up this way, so on and so forth. You know, once the battle cools down a little bit, but there's so many spots that kind of counter the center. Um, it's actually pretty easy to get into the center if you kind of roll and use the bunker as a little bit of cover, but honestly pushing up past you know, the bunker, once you get in here, you can use the cover that is built in for the, you know, your side to use. It can be used against you, so you have to be careful. But the map seems pretty cool. Who knows how it's going to work out, um, you know, with how players play it. You never know what people are going to kind of get into, like, a trend to doing. And I think it's a pretty well-designed map. Like, the bunker is really useful. Um, however, you don't necessarily need it to win. Uh, like the south, really good for TDs, mediums, you know, spotting and vision. And like pushing the, the center is a little bit risky because there's not a ton of hard cover down here. You can get shot from the center pretty well, shot from TDs and Artie. And it seems like a nice map. You know, there's a lot of strategies to play to where you kind of have to account for every flank and being such a large map. You know, it's difficult to count for everything. So each fight is probably going to feel a lot different to where you might have your team defending here and the enemy trying to attack. Both of your teams might camp. Or you might just not push it at all. And then all of a sudden, like, your team might lose this, but hey, why don't we press this hard? And look, there's the enemy base to where it's, it's a really intricate map. There's a lot of little pieces of cover. And it's going to be fun to see, like, how it works out because... It was a little difficult trying to figure out like play styles for this because th there's so many different little strategies. Like this map strategy I drew up and even the one that Wargaming did, which honestly, you know, is pretty much, it models this to an extent. Um, it, it basically, I don't think anybody knows how it's actually gonna, which spot's gonna be the most useful, like where a lot of people go. I think. Generally speaking, this is going to be like the best, easiest, like safest spot somewhere like right in the upper center here. Um, but at the same time, you know, you got high risk, high reward up here, high or low risk, high reward down here. So it's going to be a fun map. I like it. I don't really get why some people hate it without giving it a shot. But, you know, it is different. Uh, before, you know, kind of end the video here, I wanted to kind of show you the 3d styles for the battle pass this is the m48s 
which I think looks nice. Surfboard's a little overdone in my opinion, but I like, I don't like a ton of, ton of stuff, you know? The TVPs is a bit much. Uh, the TVP looks like a, I don't know, some people, someone said Prey Manus on my stream. I think it looks like a spider, scorpion, I don't know. I don't really like these things. I know they're meant for like clearing mines or whatever, but I think it would be better without it. When it does come to the battle pass, like I ended up buying it just because I have a ton of gold, <laughs> but you know, it is expensive. Like this, this go around, like you do have bounty optics, which is really useful, but it, it still stinks the way that they monetize this. And you have the bounty vertical stabilizer. Like I know I'm being a little bit of a hip hypocrite because I bought it. It is worth the price if you need um, basically universal blueprints. Uh, even national blueprints, the crew booklets are nice, and the bounty equipment plus, you know, the 3D styles if you like it. But, you know, it is another like 10 bucks a month, you know, if you just spend the gold and you have to grind to get your rewards. So you're just paying for access to it. So, yeah, it is a little tough to figure out, like, is it is it actually worth it or not? I think for veteran players, it's a little bit less worth it. Newer players, though, definitely it helps you quite a bit with uh, minimizing some grind time and getting your crews up last but not least though um you know soon we're gonna see honestly in a change to the bond the bond shop i think that's something that we're gonna see this summer um they said they wanted to basically uh change the bond shop like every six months we're a little bit overdue honestly like something uh, like this came up you know in, in a discord chat too Something I'd like to actually see, which I think is a pretty good idea, is like we, we have so personal uh, campaigns here. And like honestly, uh, they've been out for so long, some people haven't completed them. Like I, I just started on the 279E missions uh, just this week. But you know, the missions can get pretty annoying, especially like certain ones like block this, you know, this and that. I think it would be pretty interesting. Like let me know in the comments what you feel like or feel about this. But like, I think the bond shop, they should treat it to where they shouldn't remove things from it. They should continually add to it to where bonds are already, you know, they're pretty hard to get. You have to play the game, play special events, competitive, you know, stuff like that. You can't buy them where like, I guess the closest thing to buying them is you get a little bit more with premium accounts. And at the same time, the battle pass if you buy 20 levels you can get to the bonds you know even sooner uh, but you still have to grind them out i think it would be interesting though if they just continually add tanks to this and also say 3d styles you know that were sold and from special events from previous you know events that you can't get anymore 2d styles stuff like that like special stuff like whether it's cosmetic or tanks why not add them to the bond shop where um, I don't think they're going to add any more campaigns because, you know, you get too many campaigns, it's going to be confusing. And how many missions can you really come up with? Why not add in, you know, basically missions that you can earn bonds from? Like, um, instead of like a campaign mission, like, oh, you need to do 8,000 damage in a battle. Why not add in like special like monthly missions? Like, I don't know, earn five top guns or something or this and that within a certain period of time, you know, similar to like the 279E or even the other ones. And you earn like a little bit of bonds, 200 or something. And people could work towards like reward tanks, not necessarily just premium tanks, but they could add some in here. And I think that would be a better way for Wargaming to kind of move ahead because I feel like the bond currency, it's not my favorite thing with the bond equipment. I don't like that and like directives to um but you know that's just my opinion i feel like the bond currency it's a way for them it's like an end game currency i feel like they're kind of squandering it in a bit because you know as someone who almost has all the tanks in the tech tree like i'm down to just a few arties before i have them all like it would give you a reason to kind of grind out and try to do stuff whereas like doing like a 279e mission like it could be pretty frustrating but at least like you're grinding and you're playing, not necessarily just for like experience or credits anymore, but say if they release like a new tank and the only way you can get it is like 5,000 bonds and it's just, I don't know, say the concept 1B or like that A46 I was talking at the beginning of the video. Say you can buy it in a bond shop. 
awesome. Like, doesn't necessarily have to be a premium tank. It can just be a reward tank, like something special. Same with, uh, like, when we're uh, the World of Tanks NA uh, developer Q&A we had, when uh, basically talking about collector's tanks, where they could release tanks into the collector's um, yeah, I feel like it should look a little bit different, and it should be like be in the tech tree, but off to the side, like kind of how the premium tanks are on the uh, tech tree here down here. They should have a collector's tab up here, where they could put tanks into there, where you can buy them for credits. I feel like Wargaming would be kind of smart to do this, to where, imagine like the Chieftain MK6, how they can't really figure out how to put that in. If they can figure out how to balance it, and if they don't want to just like do a little side branch here since they cleaned the tech tree up, why not throw it into like a collector tank and you could buy it for, you know, six point whatever million credits or even a little bit higher credits. And it could be that. I don't think that should be a bond tank because a lot of people want it. <laughs> but, you know, it, let me know your thoughts. I think it's a pretty interesting idea to add a little bit more like end game depth to the game. Um, yeah, a little bit more grinds, but I think it would, it could be pretty interesting. Um, but let me know your thoughts. Thank you very much for watching and have a good night or good day. Since this is going to be good day. Oh my God. Daytime by the time this comes out. It's pretty late here. I'm exhausted. Thanks for watching. Have a good day, night, evening, wherever the hell you are. And, um, I'll see you guys around. Have a good one.